We recently pondered some unsolved video game mysteries, such as why Resident Evil Stars members are allowed to wear whatever they want, and why the Templars at Abstergo Entertainment keep making video games that make their enemies the assassins look like awesome badasses. Then we asked you to share the video game mysteries that have been bothering you, and you did! So here they are, the video game mysteries that have kept you up at night. Beware of spoilers for the following. Welcome to Nuevo Pariso, John. Where do I know you from? You're famous, John. The life of a cowboy in 1911 is a tough one, as the modernization of the West leaves you more and more as an outdated relic of a bygone age the world has left behind. Also, you get attacked by cougars a lot. Damn critter! So the last thing you need is to be accosted by a mysterious stranger in a top hat who looks like he just got done tying people to train tracks. He didn't, if you're wondering. I was down there earlier. But as commenter Eugene Brooks asks, Who is the strange man from Red Dead Redemption? Good question, Eugene. The strange man seems to know all about John Marston and his past misdeeds, but John doesn't recognize him at all. Hello, John. John Marston. Do I know you? I hope so. I seem to know you. He talks at length about how John will be judged for his actions and presents him with missions designed to test his morality. You know, real tough moral choices. Why don't you... Head up there and see if you can lend her a hand. Road's full of thieves. Either that or rob her yourself. In their final meeting, he even describes as a beautiful spot what eventually turns out to be the location of John Marston's grave. Hey, there's a beautiful spot. Sure. What are you doing here? Oh, he's also impervious to bullets. Damn you! Yes, many have. So, who is the strange man? There are plenty of theories. Some think he's God, judging John's actions and presenting him with new moral tests to see if he's truly left his bad old ways behind. Tell me your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. Oh, but you will. You will be responsible. Others think he's the devil, and I mean, looking at that moustache, I can see why. Still others think he's the Grim Reaper, taking account of John's life and preparing for his final judgement, as evidenced by his appearance at the site of John's grave. If there is a definitive answer, Rockstar isn't telling, so we're going to have to make our own minds up. Also, we probably shouldn't have tied so many people to train tracks. Fantasy role-playing games usually spend ages creating a vast, believable world for you to explore. Then you spend most of your time underneath that world, crawling through miles of dark, dank dungeons. It's where all the good loot lives. The problem with being deep underground is that there's not much in the way of natural light, and by not much, we mean none. So the only way you're going to get around without bumping into walls is if there are torches and candles lining the corridors, which, conveniently, there always are. But commenter Inny1984 wants to know, who lights all the candles and torches in the abandoned dungeons? Inny makes a good point. It can't be the legions of undead skeletons doing the rounds with a zippo. They don't even have eyes. Why would they need light? Not only that, but one of the things about fires is that they go out, meaning these things must have been lit recently. The only answer is that another, probably much better adventurer has been here already. Maybe the guy who is waltzing effortlessly through the depths in Dark Souls an hour or so before us, avoiding all the enemies and pausing at every sconce to light a fire, but skipping every bonfire should be the hero of this game and not us. All I'll say is, I have my suspicions as to who it is. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. Grand Theft Auto V is full of mysteries. Why does one puff of marijuana make Michael hallucinate an invading army of aliens? Where's that story DLC at? Why do they keep letting Trevor back into Ponzenbees? The biggest mystery of all, though, is that suggested by commenter Oswiniati, who says, The Mount Chiliad mystery from GTA V keeps me up at night, to be honest. This mystery originates from a map inside the cable car station at the summit of Mount Chiliad, the highest point in the state of San Andreas. There's what looks like lightning coming off the mountain, a UFO or possibly Illuminati eye above it, and a series of strange symbols representing X's, eggs, UFOs, and possibly a jetpack. 
So what does it mean? Devoted community sleuthers have spent countless hours trying to crack the mystery, with many convinced that solving it will unlock a jetpack in the game. Others think it's just a reference to the UFO that hovers over Mount Chiliad once you've 100 percented the game, and that everyone is getting way too involved in a mystery that doesn't exist. Once again, Rockstar isn't saying. Although the GTA developer's reaction to another different Mount Chiliad easter egg might reveal its attitude towards people who spend too much time poring over GTA 5 mysteries. Here is a face that appears on the side of Mount Chiliad in last gen versions of GTA 5. And if you go looking for that same mysterious face in the current gen versions of GTA 5, here's what you find. Oh, it's that subtle rock star wit again. The one in the middle, I assume that's your mother. On the left, of course, your father. And on the right, the little one. How old is she? If you've played Remedy's time manipulation action adventure slash TV box set Quantum Break, you'll remember Martin Hatch. He's the CEO of Monarch Solutions and Paul Serene's right hand man who does all his dirty work for him. But as commenter Undying the Undying points out, he's more mysterious than he first appears. Why the hell did you exclude Martin Hatch from this list? Quantum Break gave me three hours of pacing around trying to figure that one out. Later in the game, it turns out that Martin Hatch has been working against Paul's attempts to fix the end of time, and also that he might be some sort of immortal time deity who exists across all of time at once, like Dr. Manhattan in more clothes. You see, Hatch is fatally wounded in the last episode of the TV show, yet shows up conspicuously unstabbed in the face in the game's ending, trying to convince Jack Joyce to come work for Monarch. We could use a man like you. It's not the same monarch you know, Mr. Joyce. Hatch is definitely a shifter, that is to say, someone who can exist outside of normal time, and possibly the first shifter, given time powers by a naturally occurring time machine he found in a cave, according to this note found in Monarch HQ. So who is Martin Hatch really? How long has he been alive? Why does he want to let time break down, and what is the new beginning he thinks it will herald? Also, where does he get those suits? Dude is dapper AF. Do I look threatened to you? First of all, let me thank you for dealing with that personal matter. People will read something into anything these days. Experience has taught me that a man like you can be very loyal for the right price. In GTA 3, multi-millionaire Donald Love is obsessed with getting hold of a mysterious package. And when I say obsessed with getting hold of it, I mean obsessed with sending you to get hold of it while he does Tai Chi in his sweet roof garden. Think that's what they call a first world problem. This briefcase is not easy to get hold of, not least because there are a bunch of heavily armed Cubans after it as well. It's bad enough that you get shot at without an awkward run-in with your ex-girlfriend and her new squeeze. Baby. You always got a choice, you dumb bastard! And I thought dumping people via text was bad. All this fuss over a simple briefcase clearly piques the curiosity of sceptical Jesus. In GTA 3, what was in the briefcase Donald Love desperately wants? The answer is, we'll probably never know. When you finish Donald Love's mission arc, you head up to the roof of his skyscraper and find out that he's skipped town. There's an empty box there which presumably held the mysterious artifact that Love was so keen to secure, but because there was never a direct sequel to this GTA game set after the events of GTA 3, we'll never know what Donald wanted so badly. Judging by real-life multi-millionaires called Donald, it's either the president's birth certificate or plans for a 10-foot-high wall along the Mexican border that Mexico is definitely going to pay for. Gordon Freeman in the flesh. Or rather, in the hazard suit, I took the liberty of relieving you of your weapons. Most of them were government property. As for the suit, I think you've earned it. One of gaming's most enduring mysteries is the one suggested by commenter BlueShift199, who asks, Who is G-Man from Half-Life series? The G-Man to which he's referring is the shadowy suited figure who watches you throughout your Half-Life adventures and occasionally appears to you in surreal, dreamlike sequences in which he offers you jobs like an intergalactic transdimensional recruitment consultant. I have recommended your services to my uh, employers. And they have authorized me to offer you a job. They agree with me that you have limitless potential. Even after all this time, we still know next to nothing about the G-Man, who he is, who he works for, or what are his ultimate aims. Also, why he talks so funny. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. 
We know that he probably organized the Black Mesa incident, that he's maybe sympathetic to mankind's fight against the Combine, and that he's not a big fan of Vortigans, but the guy is pretty much as big a mystery now as he was when we first encountered him back in 1998. Still, I'm sure we'll find out in Half-Life 3, right Gabe? Well, I'm really not at liberty to say. In Resident Evil 2, depending on how you play, character Ada Wong has one of two endings. In one ending, she gets mullered by the tyrant and dies. Ada! In another ending, she gets shot by Annette Birkin, falls off a catwalk and dies. Ada! Or so you would think. Because by the time Resident Evil 4 rolls around, she's back in action with a fresh new evening gown. Leon. Long time no see. Ada. As commenter James Ticknor points out, in the Resident Evil series, how did Ada Wong survive being shot and drop down a seemingly bottomless shaft to make an appearance in Resident Evil 4 without Leon even questioning it? A very fine question, James. History does not record how Ada survived, sorry James, but it does record how she escaped Raccoon City after managing to not die. Something about the meeting with Leon changed me. First things first, though. I must escape this town and survive in order to accomplish my objective. According to the Umbrella Chronicles, Wesker gives her a hook shot and she grapples the hell out of Dodge onto a helicopter, leaving behind only a Jimmy Choo heel and a disappointed monster. You can have it. Which is how she lives to cartwheel another day in Resident Evil 4. My working theory is that the canonical ending of Resident Evil 2 is the one in which Ada falls off the Umbrella Laboratory catwalk and down the Umbrella Bottomless Pit, after which she lands in the Umbrella Trampoline Research Department, bounces to safety, takes a green herb and walks it off. If the T-Virus did this, what would happen if the G-Virus got out? Thank you very much for watching our video on Unsolved Video Game Mysteries. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this for much more of a similar sort of thing. And the only mystery I really want to know the answer to is why you haven't already clicked on these videos down here, which will take you to much more of our wonderful videos about video games. So over here we have Show of the Week, which is our weekly show about either a video game or a concept related to video games. And over here we have lists featuring mad video game trivia from throughout the ages all the way back to the dawn of video games. So yes, if you like this sort of thing, please watch more of this sort of thing. Thank you very much. Yeah, it definitely is, definitely is. It's got your name on it.